Okay. Hello, everyone. The sound is okay. Video. Yep. One, two, three. One, two, three. I still will need to clean a little bit of the mess. I was doing some initial troubleshooting. Okay, got the mix. Let's see. One, two, three. Dead mic. Okay. How bad is it? One, two, three. How about now? This should be much better. I do the live streams only once a year, so excuse me for the technical issues. Okay, so this is good. Uh, that's good to know. Hopefully not too much background noise. Okay, sound is sorted out. So now let's uh, sort out the mess on the desk and then we're good to go. Okay. So there are a number of projects pending my attention, but today we will do a hopefully quick fix on this guy, so we can get the resistance uh, experiments running again, measuring all the PPMs and PPBs. So that's the goal for today. And I'm also using a new wide-angle lens on my DSLR, so it's a base special, but I like it very much. can see quite a lot of stuff at 14 millimeters lens, so... And there is no bridge uh, schematics available, but in this case we can do without it. I did a uh, little bit of testing and reverse engineering last uh, couple days, so I'll show you what actually happened, what broke, and what the fix is, hopefully, if there are no other issues. And then we will put it back together and get it running again, do some tests, 
and hopefully not break anything else in process. All right. You can see already like some of the test resistor samples right over there. So this is 0 0.1 ohm. That this is the last resistor I was running when the uh, bridge failed. So this is our screws and parts and everything. And these are shields from some other day project. So we'll have to get this out of the way. Those who actually online on XDEVS IRC already know what is all this business about with the mess on the table. And the rest uh, who don't know, they should join up our PPM shed if, if you want to be interested in what's going on on a daily basis. This is also another test resistor, 1 ohm, GRL, CH48T4HK, high power 1 ohm resistor. And uh, my test resistor is Fluke 742A 1 ohm. my box with relays we already replaced a uh, few a couple days ago this is I don't remember where it's from Is the video okay? I didn't mess much with the parameters today uh, for the exposure and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so we will need the current source, uh, AC actually AC voltage source, right over there. Chroma 61604. So that what will be powering our bridge today, and we can monitor the current consumption and have ability to shut it off uh, quickly in case we need so while that is booting up 
I can show you a couple of the uh, photos I took a couple days ago when the bridge actually failed. some boards over there all right so what happened is uh, I was running some resistors tra re transfers with uh, 1 ohm to 0 0.1 ohm and then was switching to 0 0.1 ohm so I could uh, do some testing for uh, resistors uh, temperature coefficient stuff like that usually I set up the experiment uh, to run uh, from Raspberry Pi uh, Python script so it would uh, talk to the bridge talk to my environment uh, uh, sensors and uh, control uh, air bath uh, chambers so I could uh, change the temperature of the resistors and uh, see how they behave uh, according to different temperatures and do all the different uh, measurements and experiments. And when I was switching the resistor to 001 ohm, what happened is I get some small uh, electrical shock uh, from one of the terminals and that was very unexpected because uh, this bridge can source up to 30 volts uh, on uh, open uh, circuit but like uh, there was very low current so and it was also testing low uh, uh, resistance uh, values so I wasn't expecting any high voltages over there so and that first time it ever happened so like I thought like okay this is strange I thought maybe like there is some uh, leakage from mains uh, on the metal parts of my air chamber so I took the Fluke 87 measured uh, voltage AC voltage between the chamber some different resistors and uh, cables and there was everything was fine everything was zero or like there are a couple millivolts just pick up noise and then I noticed that bridge uh, had the blank screen and the backlight was still working, but the LCD screen didn't show anything. And I was thinking, okay, strange. Uh, did the power cycle for the bridge, and it booted up uh, normally. GPAB controls and GPAB responses were all there. But when I tried to measurement, I get some errors, and... Uh, Oh boy, uh, I'll need to copy. When I, yeah, when I changed the picture, I didn't forget, uh, I forget to change the audio source as well. Uh, one second. How about now? Now should be good. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, let me change to other pictures as well. Okay, go back to the stuff. 
so what I was describing on this picture, this picture was taken just uh, a couple days ago when the bridge uh, first failed after I uh, power cycled it. Uh, so it's actually supposed to show 1 ohm here and 1.9 ohm at RS. So this is the two resistors connected on RX 1 ohm, RS 1.9 ohm, but instead I get this much lower incorrect values and the current was programmed 10 milliamps, but this is just a setting and measure current was 8.72 milliamps for IS so the current was programmed incorrectly because the bridge uh, did the quick measurement, values were incorrect and obviously this wasn't uh, uh, supposed uh, this wasn't working as it's supposed to be so then I tried to run the, the self uh, test self calibration procedure and I was greeted with it does some uh, measurements for zero turn balance, one, one turn balance and there is usually like some small uh, uh, couple of millivolts values in there but right now it was reporting just minus 1000 volts which is obviously um, some erroneous uh, reading and zero turn balance looked okay but it, it was not and uh, first check like with all the cables and everything uh, didn't reveal anything uh, wrong so then I took it apart look at the board and this was one of the it's actually uh, IX uh, current source and then I found this R17 right in the center it's uh, Vichy S102 uh, bulk metal foil resistor it's supposed to be 100 ohms, 0.1% uh, but as you can see it doesn't look very good it has a big bulge uh, on the side and also when I was uh, take, uh, taking the covers from the bridge I smelled a uh, deep uh, uncomfortable smell of burnt electronics that is never good so I thought like, oh, like maybe some tantalum capacitor is uh, blown up because you can see quite a lot of them, like uh, all uh, around the op-amps, those yellow bits, those are uh, tantalum capacitors and in many of the older equipment, such as uh, Datron calibrators, Wavetech multimeters, uh, um, Fluke calibrators as well, uh, they tend to uh, catch fire and uh, also have some spectacular smokes uh, released so I was thinking the first uh, idea was to check all the tantalums but that was uh, just before I found this blown up uh, precision resistor in there and uh, there are a bunch of other resistors they are different values so this R19 R I believe that is R19 down there, R20, R18. Uh, those uh, looked okay, so we will actually be checking them. And this uh, P3, the big uh, black uh, potentiometer with the Shea uh, label on it, it's actually very expensive. It's a $45 potentiometer. It's also a metal foil uh, trim pot uh, with uh, 10 ohms nominal resistance. So yeah we'll have to check that one because essentially all these resistors as we will see in a, in a second they all connected uh, together um, and after the removing the resistor this is i just scratched it a little bit and all the magic smoke released so yep there is uh, no hundred ohms in there I measured it with my Keithley 2002 and it shows like 0.5 giga ohms so it's blown open alright and uh, the whole board is actually not that complex it's two layer board so we can see the big uh, TO3 package this is actually op amp it's Apex uh, PA07 uh, high current uh, op amp high voltage very nice and very expensive op-amp, it's around $130 on Mauser 
and there are a bunch of other foil resistors you can see all these black square bodies those are foil precision resistors there is a chip down there this U1 uh, in the metal can that is a voltage reference for I believe 2.5 volts output there are a few op amps uh, BG411 switch 441 actually and uh, AD7543 also expensive chip and on top you have just uh, 5 volt and plus minus 15 volt regulators just linear jobbies nothing special and there are three relays and uh, relay driver so it's not that uh, complicated board and this board is made uh, around uh, let's see the date codes uh, 19 1999 uh, but actually one of amp in the center it's from 1987 it's BB uh, branded top amp OPA 445BM so this is the closer up on the same same photo the top amp U7 I was talking about on the left side next to 10 kilo ohm and a bunch of 10 ohm resistors all right so let's uh, see uh, what's else inside in the bridge believe I can take the camera off the tripod so I can show you a little bit and I don't have the cable long enough so that's a tricky business maybe I'll use the different camera Give me a second. Alright. So here is what we can see. There are a bunch of uh, outguard, uh, so to speak, uh, electronics here. So we have the power supply with the big heat sinks, big capacitors. There is another one down there. And there is a CPU board, this guy. So it have like uh, brains of the bridge essentially. Have uh, firmware on it, uh, some uh, digital logic and the microprocessor. All the transformers are on down bird down there. Under this, actually, there are two of the power supply boards like that because we need two floating sources, so they are isolated. And there are a bunch of transformers down there, and there is another power supply board uh, mounted vertically. And then we have uh, our current source, so this is uh, IS, this is IX, I believe, because they are quite different. This board have much more components because it's adjustable source. So bridge will automatically adjust uh, that one based on the uh, IX and measured uh, values. So this board is uh, standing like that because it's an extender for easier troubleshooting. Then there is two relay boards which are switching different taps on the transformers uh, inside of the uh, main uh, uh, current comparator. And then there is a detector board, which is this guy, and it's actually having that metal can, that is EM810 custom amplifier. So it's uh, not a standard A10, but uh, one specifically optimized for the bridge uh, use. Then we have big, huge copper terminals over there. So, and then we have the main... Uh, transformer with all the uh, DCC stuff happening inside like in the shielded can over there I'm not sure if actually camera shows it or not so 
that's uh, how it's built. It's quite modular, so you can extract any of these boards and uh, do like some troubleshooting, especially like using the extender like that. Uh, very nicely built. And then, interesting part is there is a lamp, actually an uh, incandescent bulb in the metal heatsink with the infrared filter and fiber optic uh, cable with a bunch of strands. That's a backlight for the LCD. So this is all fiber. It's very unusual to see. Uh, obviously in modern equipment you would see just a um, LED backlight instead of, or like if it's uh, bigger LCDs, sometimes you would see CCFL backlight. But normal lamp, and it's get quite hot actually, like 150 degrees uh, Celsius or so. So <laughs> very interesting. And then on the front you have just a uh, keypad, LCD, and this actually a uh, reference table I made uh, to um, show the optimal settings and different resistance values and what's the ratio typical standard deviation is for the transfer. And yes, that's 005 ppm for most of the base ranges. Pretty cool. Okay. Let's switch back to the camera. And probably I'll also replace the lens. So we can have a better and closer look. Okay, I think camera is ready. There's the view from the top. Well, the tabs actually, there are 16,384 tabs. And also the residual between the tabs is measured with the uh, EMA-10, which have the noise around 0 0.3 nanovolts. So that is 300 picovolts. And Essentially, uh, whatever the uh, disbalance there is, uh, Bridge will measure it and uh, use the whatever nanovolts uh, residual to calculate uh, resistance value, actually the ratio between two resistances uh, to nine and a half digits uh, stability. So the whole whole principle how bridge uh, operates is uh, it will have very stable and very uh, uh, very accurate uh, balance between RX and RS resistors. So like if you have the same current uh, going, well actually not the same current but same current with the ratio of the resistors then you will have uh, zero current uh, between them when you have uh, two of the uh, currents balanced and then by knowing uh, how many taps you used and what's the residual from the nanovolt uh, meter uh, integrated in the bridge you get 
you can calculate the ratio between two resistors very accurately. The bridge itself, it does not uh, uh, have ability to measure just one resistor. It's always a comparison between one resistor and another. So you must have one calibrated and well-characterized and well-known resistor to calculate and determine what's the value for the unknown resistor that you connect. That's why it's called bridge. It's not a resistance meter like you have DMM, where you would be able to just connect one resistor and get the value on, on the screen. Uh, you can only compare with the bridge. So you cannot do the absolute measurements uh, uh, internally. Because the bridge itself, it doesn't have the high-end stable resistors inside to act as a standard. So uh, it's relying on external uh, standards that you connect to it. But it gives you all the uh, uh, stability and uh, resolution to be able to determine that ratio very, very precisely. So essentially your resistance measurement is as good as your standards are. So now that we have it on the side, I believe I should have some background. Maybe I'll just use a piece of paper on the back. So we could have a nicer look. Hmm. Question is where I can find a piece of paper. I believe this will do. So what we can do now is we can take the board out actually and uh, look through the piece around burnt resistor that I reverse engineered and then we can check other parts and uh, see what's what's wrong because I already what's wrong already know what's is broken so that's the broken parts right there it's the resistor that I already shown and the op amp that was uh, related to it so what uh, my working theory what happened is uh, because of the some charge or ESD uh, zap on the terminals when I was swapping resistors that uh, get uh, current source damaged so that op amp either latched or get uh, damaged uh, internally so the full power rail was connected to the resistor network, resistor chain. And because the power is uh, high enough, that caused that 100 ohm resistor to burn out. And then whatever I was doing afterwards, it was just uh, not working properly because the damage was done. As the board itself. So there are some bodge wires. I didn't put those there, they were already there before. And overall, two layer board, DIN connector. Not that uh, difficult to investigate. So let me put some gloves on. And we can take some parts out, check them, and put the good stuff back in, and see if everything works.
All right. Should we keep this angle or change to something else? I have actually webcam and also my DSLR. So we have two options, essentially. Let's see if the webcam works better. There is that uh, fume extraction hose sticking out. And the variable, there is a question, is that a variable resistor I saw in the thumbnail earlier? Yes, that resistor is uh, Vichay 1280G. Uh, you can Google it up. It's a bulk metal foil uh, trim pot. I think a little bit like so. So what we can also do is look at the schematics bit, which I was drawing till. 4 a.m. in the morning in a very bad mood so let's look at that for a second so here is the schematics um, as you can see, let me try to zoom that in a little. Maybe like so. Sorry of my poor live streaming skills. Essentially, what is happening here, you can see right in the center, R17. Uh, that is 100 ohm resistor that burned. It's connected to R18, 5 ohm resistor, also a uh, metal foil. Then it's connected to that trim pot, 10 ohm, 1280G trim pot, which have the specified uh, temperature coefficient 5 ppm per degree. And then it's connected together with a bunch of other, like 10 ohm resistors, 13, R14, R15, R16. And we have this uh, little strange looking network. Perhaps there is some extra connection should be drawn in here. And all that is connected to our OPA445 op-amp, which is uh, output, uh, it's essentially a buffer, because uh, you can see non-inverting input is connected to, to op-amp from all these resistors, and then inverting input is connected to output directly, and uh, output is further uh, feed to 10K, 10K resistor divider. And then that all that goes to that big uh, PA07 Apex op amp. So that is our main power amplifier uh, that feeds the output current. And uh, I've traced a bunch of other uh, circuits, but they are not really related uh, as much uh, to all this stuff uh, with the resistors. And then a bunch of relays, those uh, K2, K3, K4, they just handle the uh, reversal for the current and also external uh, current uh, connection if you want to use this bridge uh, uh, with the extender so together with the extender uh, mi provides the capability to give currents much higher than what uh, bridge itself can do for example the bridge they have capability up to 250 milliamps of the current uh, and with the extenders uh, you can go up to like 10,000 amps depends on what configurations of extender you have so for example if somebody want to measure uh, very accurately high power shunt like 100 amp shunt or 1000 amp shunt which often can have like micro ohm uh, resistances 
then you would use the bridge together with the extenders. So the relay K4 is related uh, to routing the current outside of the bridge, so it can be ratioed, and then uh, extender have own uh, DCC transformer, so you could get the higher uh, ratios. Bridge itself can do only ratios up to uh, 14, so it's either uh, resistance you measure should be less than uh, ratio 14 or with the extenders you can do ratios like 100, uh, 1000 and so on. Alright, so here like we can see R17 burned, so but I have R18 and that expensive trim pot, they looked okay, there was no visible damage, but I don't have any confidence in them, uh, because who knows uh, like how much current uh, flow through them uh, when the fault occur. And uh, I have uh, right now uh, trim pot replacement, brand new from DigiKey, it was $45 for one trim pot. And I have replacement for R19, uh, 1 kilo ohm. And also I have new uh, 100 ohm. <laughs> so essentially what we'll uh, do is replace, uh, actually desolder those resistors first, measure them. And uh, see if they are in ball ballpark correct value. I think they are because actually I did some quick tests with the bo bodged uh, parts and it looked uh, like uh, it's working again. But that's a little bit of a teaser already. So let's go step by step. All right. Here are a bunch of parts, they uh, arrive from DigiKey, all the goodies. So, let me rescale the picture back. So what we can do is try to reposition camera so I can actually have room to work. I wish I could have some more room so I could have like semi-permanent um, spot for the live streams and stuff. Oh well, cannot have it all. So to test and troubleshoot the issues, uh, other than reverse engineering the schematic uh, piece, uh, I put, uh, I actually did had a similar packaged uh, foil resistor of 100 ohms, so I put instead uh, three resistors, 300 ohms each, so in parallel, so I get like 100 ohm-ish uh, uh, value there. But like just replacing resistor, as expected, didn't uh, help much because something else was also broken. So that's that uh, resistor network. You can see like, it's like three resistors sticking out. Um, so I start checking some other things, check the nanovolt detector, it was all good. Check the other source board, uh, it was also fine. And then uh, I suspected this op-amp because essentially in the schematics, uh, you can see it's uh, sitting like uh, together with all these resistors. So if some of this resistor failed, like this one, then we could have issue with the op amp. Uh, so like as I explained earlier. So what I did, I didn't have this uh, OPA 445 in stock. Uh, 
on my shelf. So what I did is I put uh, uh, LF256. This is a similar performance uh, op amp. It's a low, low bias current, a uh, little bit higher offset uh, than uh, 445, but otherwise, like performance, it's also two, two times faster than original op amp. But for the quick uh, test, it was uh, suitable enough. And uh, Bridge actually started uh, giving uh, reasonable readings after I replaced the op amp. So I bought uh, a new replacement to op amps. Here they are. They are each uh, around like $15 or so. So I bought a bunch of them. Actually, same op amp is also used in 5720 Fluke Calibrator. That's why I'm a little bit familiar with these guys. So we'll be replacing the op amp and then replacing those resistors. And one of the reasons why, is why this op amp is uh, expensive. That's a nice package, right there. Because the Hermetic uh, TO99-8 uh, uh, package, it's not some uh, cheap dip or SO SMD junk that we usually see in equipment. It's quite interesting that TGT sent three op amps in uh, tube. Very nice thick looking tube. But a uh, couple others just in the carrier. Come on. I think we just need one today. So let's. Sorry, you didn't see that. That's a very nice carrier. And then this deep package with three of them. And we'll have one more inside. And the op amp is OPA 445BM. Currently, it's manufactured still current uh, op amp made by Texas Instruments because they are the ones who eat up uh, Bourbon. So, I'm happy that it's not obsolete part as usually happens with these hermetic packages. So, and actually the price is within reasonable, reasonable limits because some of these hermetic packages, like you can buy a pamp, like in normal deep package, uh, epoxy package for like maybe like five dollars or something for really good op amp. And then if you go to the like space qualified hermetic packaging of the same op amp, it would cost like hundred dollars. So, fifteen for uh, this one is not that bad. So what we can do is we take the LF uh, op amp that I used to test out of the circuit and then put the new op amp in. Maybe we can have even closer look. There we go. How about that? I mean, how hard is it, is it to replace the open from the socket, right? Don't even don't even need to uh, turn the soldering iron on. So left two five six H. This was the original test op amp that I used to check. So there was an ESD bag for it. LF256H, JFED 5 megahertz op amp, also from Texas Instruments. I bought this one to fix one of my 5720 boards. So 
Now we can take the new OPA and this it had like this huge huge legs. I don't like huge legs. I always cut them when I see them. So that's what we will do. Chop, chop. That's much better. Make sure we don't get the metal pieces somewhere we don't want them to be. Make sure the <laughs> keys are correct and I'll need to actually align everything nice and straight. And usually I try to avoid touching pins because why to add extra possible contaminations and stuff if you can avoid it. Wiggle wiggle yeah. yeah almost. There we go. Give it some wiggle wiggle. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> and it's funny enough, still have the Bor Brown logo on it, not the Haas instruments. Well, because Bor Brown factories and IP is still uh, part of the Haas instruments, so they're still making these bad boys. Nice to know. And that Apex PO07 costs around, uh, let's see, P07 Mauser. Funny enough, it's still in stock, <laughs> given all the cra crazy shortages we are dealing with. In stock, 487 pieces, yours for $135.9. US and that is for one piece so this uh, big op amp is uh, have TO3 package gain bandwidth product 1.3 megahertz output current per channel 5 amps and bias current 50 pico amps so it have uh, maximum voltage 50 volts so that's what is used uh, here in the bridge. Very nice open. And yes, some of them like they, they have uh, op amps that goes up to like thousand volts and also have the op amps that goes like 30 amps, I believe. And those uh, cost uh, like well over a thousand dollars for one op amp. So they also have very nice uh, big packages like for the uh, thermal conductions and everything so very schmick stuff and you can see it's have a label uh, BO that's mean beryllium oxide insulation inside and beryllium oxide is uh, better thermal uh, insulator uh, actually better thermal conductor and better electrical insulator than uh, usual uh, uh, aluminum, alumina oxide, so that's the reason why it's BO here. And I think the reason why they label it on the package is if you destroy this uh, op amp or like try to sand it and sew it or uh, mechanically uh, take apart, 
the dust from beryllium oxide uh, material is actually quite uh, har harmful so you don't want to inhale that and you want to take precautions uh, that's why they put the label on it all right so another closer look that's the ad7543 another expensive chip um, it's next to the switch it's used to program the current so because like you essentially set any current you want uh, from 0 0.1 milliamps or actually even lower than that if you want to up to 250 milliamps and then the bridge will do the uh, all the magic from your desired current so you can have the resistors tested at different currents by using this uh, programmable functionality and 7543 is 12-bit multiplying current output DAC it's only 12 bits so not much low gain drift 2 ppm per degree and uh, small size 5 volt supply uh, nothing super special about it it still cost around uh, let's see 38 dollars uh, in 100 pieces uh, quantities on analog devices uh, website So let's see today. What I'll do is now remove uh, this guy, remove this bodge 100 ohm. Then we can test that uh, 1 kilo ohm. And maybe also check the output uh, 10 kilo ohm. This guy and this guy because I'm not sure they were sitting on the output I'm not sure if they are also good or not so I bought a uh, couple of uh, resistors we will be replacing and also I found some older ones I already had back in stock so let's see what they are So this is some of my old stash this is actually a divider two dividers uh, 10k 10k this is one kilo ohm 001 percent z201 this is another 10 kilo ohm and this one is 10 kilo ohm as well so we can do uh, some swaps and also there is this uh, magical trimmer get on the label there's the label so I'll be replacing also this trim pot Not much of a packaging for the $45 part. So this is the trim part we're talking about. And actually this one is worse performance than original one. This one says 15 ppm per degree temperature coefficient and 10 ohms. So Okay, we're back. 
So what else I got? This is like a DG key unboxing stuff. Okay, these are shields for some secret project that will be released soon enough on xdevs.com. It's a stainless steel tint uh, shield can. Like you, this is the one you would put on the PCB around uh, some uh, sensitive parts or the opposite around the part that give a lot of noise and you want to contain that noise inside. So nice shield. There's the part number there. So these are another resistors. These are 100 ohms. So we'll be replacing one of these guys. I bought two because never have enough uh, precision resistors. So we can use, and also these are 005%. The difference between 0.1% and 0.05 was like a couple dollars, so we can splurge a little and have a better 100 ohms. I don't think it does, it does actually matter for the purpose here. Okay, so that's that. I also got some other op amps, OP27E. Uh, just in case I want to replace any of those. Uh, also some more shields, different size. Some of the fit throughs. This is like a ferrite bead, but with the metalized center that you connect to the ground for the 100% shielding uh, around the cans. Some of the MP0 COG 100 nanofarad 1206s some of the optocouplers in case I need to replace any of the ones in the bridge and a bunch of other stuff fuel op amps and this is the Kadak 10 mega ohm I'm building a little test standard for 10 mega ohms so this is 5 ppm per degree um, film resistor, we'll test it, and some connectors, well, that's it, so we have 100, 100 ohms, we have 1k, we have 10ks, and the trim pot, that's the stuff we will replace. And I also replace these two relays, the one that is uh, responsible for switching uh, polarity, uh, because I wasn't sure, like maybe the relay got stuck as well, and the contacts may be damaged, so I got uh, those replaced uh, already. All right, time to heat up soldering iron. Okay, I think we're ready to go. I'm making sure that I have everything handy.
Let's get the fume extractor going. So I think my strategy would be just hold the resistor and then touch with both pins. Get the solder melted and take it out. Easy peasy. And I think I'll need more of the solder to help it with the thermal conduction. Place this guy, that guy, and this guy. And that's it. That's my bodged 100 ton resistor. Get the one kilo ohm out. Better handle. Okay. That's one kilo ohm. Also out. And the tricky business is to get this trim pot because it's quite have three pins so i need to do a quick go around and there you go oh actually it's the same 15 ppm per degree 10 ohms it's made in uh, 1995, week 07, plus minus 10% uh, trim pot. And ours is the new one, is made in 11 week 2021, also 10%. So, we can test these parts. And also I wanted to replace and these guys so the question is for the 10 kilo ohms either i want to uh, put a divider in them in there because divider in theory have better tracking for the ratio or just have individual uh, resistors in there uh, you can take Take them out first, decide later. And let's make sure that we are taking the right part out. Number one. That's number two. These are S one oh two. Um, K? Yes, S one or two K. Not that difficult. So what we can do is we can measure resistances of those and see if they are any good 
So we, we will still put the new parts in, not to put the old ones. But knowing that uh, the original parts were okay will give us a better idea if uh, actually anything else uh, was also broken or not. All right, I'll move the camera to my trusty Kifli 2002. It's my bench meter. I use it for all the repairs and everything else. So. my workhorse. And I use Probe Master probes. They are nice and sharp. And we need to measure the two wire resistance. First, let's see 10 kilo ohm. All right, that's pretty close to 10 kilo ohm. Not too bad. Try another one. 10 kilo ohm. 10.0. Oh. 10.001. Also looks okay. Let's check our one kilo. Ohm. That was right next to the burnt one. Still one kilo. Ohm. One zero zero one eight uh, something. And this is my bodge uh, hundred ohm. Well, pretty was to close to hundred. And let's check the trim pad. So across the far terminals. 10.61 something and across the far and middle 564 and middle and near 5141 we can actually adjust the new trim pot to about the same value so let's see that oh interesting actually this trim pot have golden legs that's interesting You can see the old one down there and then the new one up there. So I measured 5.6 kilo 5.6 ohms between this far one and uh, the center wiper and then 5.1 ohm between the center and the near pin. So we can adjust this new trim pot to the approximately same values and uh, call it today and put it in the board where's my meter there we go Is there enough voltage in there to damage the 10 kilo ohm? Um, well, the supply voltage for that op amp is plus minus 15 volts. So in theory, we can have up to 30 volts. Um, and that is probably not enough to burn the 10 kilo ohms. But I'd say that uh, can give more power than they would be very happy for so okay now that is interesting yeah this one is just adjusted all the way to the end we can readjust it so let's try to do that in one hand holding the probes another hand turning the trim pot side keep the tongue at the right angle we need 5.6 something something and this is still multi-turn 
potentiometer. So I guess it will be a little while. Mm. Yeah, let me just uh, do the maybe like 10 turns counterclockwise. That should be something like that. And now we can measure. There we go. It's kind of hard to same time hold two probes in one hand but I can do it we need 5.6 ish almost there maybe one more turn too much. Let's see the original again. Five point six five. Oh, come on. Five point six. Let's see the probe resistance. Okay, so we have uh, Maybe I'll just null it out. There we go. Relative. I don't think it really matters. 5.562. Uh, Let's call it that. And this one is too low. So let's do slightly higher. like there. I think that's good enough. So the other end 5.048 and here 5. Point, well, yeah, you know, because the actual resistance across the whole uh, trim pot on the old one we have 10.5505 and the new one we have smaller value. So yeah, the ratio isn't the same. I guess we need to adjust it slightly lower to get similar result. Let's call it 5.3 and have it at that. Oh, come on. Wrong way again. Good enough. So we can check the new resistors as well. Just to make sure they all happy. That's our new 100 ohms. I'd say that's close enough. And this is one hour 1K. All right. But before I put the new resistors in, I'll need to clean up a little bit uh, for holes.
Okay, let's clean up the holes with the solder wick. That's my preferred way of doing things. So I don't apply any physical pressure to the board, I just uh, hold the wick flat to the surface, so we could have good thermal contact, and then use the heat from the iron to melt it down. If you start like pushing and scratching, then you will damage the solder ma mask uh, layer on the board and cause all the nasty looking bodges so we don't want that also another interesting thing is there is no fan in the bridge bridge is taking only about 25 watts of electrical power and it's like big enclosure helps with thermals pretty good so it's not like you have huge uh, high power stuff inside but still those op amps they get very toasty the big uh, PA07 jobbies so we cleaned a couple holes here but like this hole and that these three and that three uh, they didn't clean up completely so I used the um, toothpick from other side so I hit the hole from this side and then I'll push from other end to get the solder out and that usually just do the right amount of work required And the reason why I don't want to use the solder wick on the other end of the board because solder wick have the flux inside to help with the thermal transfer but because of the flux we will need to clean it afterwards and I don't really want to have any flux residue on the top surface of the board because it will be like you can clean most of it but some of the residues still will be there so trying to make the board clean by not putting dirt on it in the first place how's that for a reason okay I think we have all our holes free so we'll just remove remaining excess of the solder in here and I think we're good looks nice and clean I also like to clean up excess of the flux because we don't need all that to put new resistors in. So I'll just use XDEVS calibrated Q-tips 
uh, with uh, 99% or 91% IP. So you can see it's like how it's all yellow now. So now we take the other end. It would help if you apply some alcohol. And I don't go all over the board because you will still be smearing some of the residue around. So the sections that are not dirty, we try not to make them more dirty. It's not like there is any super high impedance stuff uh, around here, but it's a nice habit to keep your uh, hardware clean when you work on it. It also looks better on camera. So. It's not that we're replacing parts in very expensive and very rare piece of equipment every day at least most of us so why not to show it a little bit of respect Now our holes are nice and clean. I'll put the new resistors in. Okay. Maybe I'll have a little go over there. Clean. Now we can put the trim pot in. And actually, the pins are like a little bit uh, triangle shaped. They are not exactly same round pins you usually find. I really like to go in. Whoops. Don't run away. I think actually the the base of the pin is a little bit wider. Let's see on the old one. Looks so slightly smaller, maybe. So it will not sit exactly flush to the board surface, which is okay. Come on. Yeah, good enough. Let's put. 1k right there and then 100 ohms right there it 
looks all right. So we can solder them in. Also, I try to give it uh, just like a couple seconds of the soldering and then take the iron away. So don't overheat the resistor body. And just a couple seconds, all you need if you have the good thermal connection between the soldering iron and the uh, joint. Now that uh, one leg is soldered. I can cut the excess lamp on the unsoldered pin so it will be easier to have a good joint. That's it. The resistors are nice and happy. And this uh, bodge looking R20 right there, that was the factory uh, stuff. That's how it uh, came in. I didn't botch this up together. And this together makes around one resistor is 121 kilo ohm, another one is 17.9. So this is some custom value 50 ppm, 1% resistors. And I think the reason why they used uh, two of these uh, resistors in this body instead of one of the metal foil resistors uh, is uh, you cannot easily get metal foil resistors of high, like over 100 kilo ohm range because of the physical uh, parameters of the foil element. You would need to have bigger uh, foil element and that would be bigger case as well. So instead they just budged uh, two of the film resistors uh, like that. All right, let's clean up uh, this area and then go to our 10 kilo ohm. So let's do a decision. Either we do uh, 10 10k 10k separate resistors or 10k divider what do you guys say what do you say we can do either way so whatever you say i'll do that let's do some online voting What should I put? 10K divider or two separate 10 kilo ohm resistors? All right, this is, looks okay-ish.
So with the divider, I would need to stretch the legs. Uh, let's first, I have two dividers, so let's remove connection between them. So the tape was uh, the number of the test I was running. So I would need two of them sitting like that and one pin goes all the way over there. So it wouldn't look as super pretty, but electrically it might be better. Or we can just uh, call it a day and put uh, these uh, two different uh, 10k resistors in there. Actually I think they are the same. Yeah, they are the same. What do you guys think? Two discrete resistors. Well, anybody else? Third option. There is no third option. We need uh, two 10 kilo ohm elements over there. Original. Hmm. Since we are at it, I like to replace things. And we can test original resistors in future experiments. Alright, so nobody wants the divider, huh? Last call, last chance to make a budge. XDEV special budge. <laughs> Todd will need to have a uh, relogin under his name. Mr. AE Labs. No budge. Okay. Let's do no budge then. Also, the new the ones I am replacing they are zero zero one percent, but the originals were zero point one percent. So, ten times more precision. And I don't think I'm really qualified enough to first understand everything that works in this bridge and the second to call anything an improvement without that deep understanding. So I think we will just do fine in here with discrete resistors. After all, uh, it doesn't really matter what currents uh, these sources are providing as soon as they are stable within the measurement time and as soon as the uh, magnetic compar com comparator is working correctly. So, like, it doesn't matter if we compare 10.1 milliamp to 1.01 milliamp or if we compare 9.9 .9 milliamp to 0 0.99 milliamp. The ratio is the same. So that's what, what is really important here. And that is how this bridge is able to obtain that uh, extremely high performance. It's not relying on some magical, super stable, super low noise uh, uh, current source, but it's relying at the 
ratio between two current sources. So, and the ability to determine that ratio very, very precisely is what makes these bridges uh, special. And also, because they like the whole reason why they are using transformer uh, with the many, many taps inside. Uh, to perform this uh, comparison of the currents is uh, transformers they are mechanical elements essentially and they don't have like their like all their resistors even like very fancy very expensive Vichy hermetic resistors they all drift over time and they all drift over temperature but transformer doesn't do that transformer is essentially if you uh, have 10 turns uh, winding then it will not become like 9.9 .9 turns uh, over uh, duration of time or it will not uh, have 11 turns after 10 years it will be still 10 turns so that's why this bridge doesn't have the temperature coefficient and uh, it doesn't have uh, any long term stability issues it's essentially just ratio to ratio uh, for a transformer that depends its stability and plus the nanovoltmeter uh, with the EM810 module but that nanovoltmeter is just uh, like it's giving you last uh, bits of resolution maybe like last two or three uh, digits it does not give you the uh, majority of stability contribution from the whole setup but they do need to have very very low noise uh, nanovolt detection uh, to be able to determine those uh, super small changes so that's why it's using EM810 and not just like usual op-amp uh, with some uh, high gain so that's the idea There are a number, number of uh, papers available online on uh, direct uh, current comparator bridges and uh, Measurements International is not the only company who does that. Uh, there is another also Canadian company called Guildline and they have their own uh, line of uh, bridges and comparators. So their current uh, bridge is uh, 6622 is the model number but they are like in performance wise they are very similar to measurements international 6010 series and also there are like different variations optimized for thermometry like uh, the bridges with the t letter in the model name they have like uh, some specific provisions to allow you enter like coefficients for the platinum standards uh, temperature standards and stuff like that and I think Measurements International and Guildline are only like commercial uh, well-known companies who are making quantum standards for national labs and collaboration labs so that's uh, also like part of the whole infrastructure why those companies are the top dogs for resistance uh, metrology I think we cleaned everything good enough Let's see some fingerprints So that's pretty much it.
wire bodges well wire bodges I'm not going to touch so let's put it in and look at those copper terminals aren't the beauty and I think I can turn off the fume extractor we can rearrange the view like so Well, this is actually extender from my 5700 uh, repair project. I made these extenders for Fluke 5700 calibrator repairs. So they're just straight one-to-one. Uh, -one. Uh, Dean uh, connectors, double row. Very handy. So this board goes like that. Also, like good idea to always check the pins, make sure they are not bent. So that board is in. I can show briefly the other current source. So this is the second board. It have quite expensive AD 569GN uh, chip, more uh, AD7701, 2 voltage, actually 3 voltage references, uh, same Apex uh, PA07, a bunch of uh, isolation, more capacitors, some op amps, stuff like that. And then a nanovolt detector. I can probably carefully try to show it. So you have the connections to A10 right over there. Bunch of relays. There is uh, op amp over there and uh, some extra uh, stuff but this is all the voltage regulators and you have the very heavy and nice copper connections for the RX and RS 4 wire resistors connections so that's that so what we can do is power on and see if it works maybe I'll change the lens as well there we go Board stick, which board? 
this actually plate uh, it's uh, mounted uh, to the uh, rear panel it's a big re rear panel uh, cover so but right now there is nothing mechanically supporting this uh, side so that's why they are kind of sticking out but they all inserted uh, all the way a decent angle yeah, I think this is better let's power on and see what happens unless I forget something we should be good to go and for uh, our DUTs I'll be using two resistors for first test and they will be right over there so these are uh, this is 1 ohm, this is 0 0.1 ohm and the values you can see on the label uh, from my previous calibrations obviously those values are obtained in the um, obtained in the air bath for both standards at 23 degrees so the temperature coefficient of the 0 0.1 ohm is actually pretty bad it's around 10 ppm per degree but for the quick test it doesn't really matter and we can try some other resistors uh, later too so let's see if the magic smoke escapes all the boards plugged in and I think I'll just put a piece of paper on top to avoid anything falling on the from the sky and actually I made the Photoshop image of uh, the routing on this board when I was figuring out where where his connections are where all the connections are and that's how I reverse engineered uh, this piece of schematics over there all right so we will enter 110 volts 60 hertz at the ac source power on and there is you can see there is no power switch button because the bridge is never supposed to be sitting and doing nothing it's always supposed to be measuring something so there should be no idling bridges and let me do a sniff test doesn't smell anything bad so far just a residue of the former smells lamp is working everything looking good let's uh, do the the backlight is not very bright so I believe I'll just um, turn off some lights and probably get some more sensitivity on my camera so we can see better that 
that should be better. Let's do, oh yeah. Now we can almost see stuff. If not that recle reflection, that would be very nice. All right, let's run the calibration test. So it should give some reasonable values in here. Okay. Zero turn balance. So here, we, when it was broken, it was showing minus 1000 volts. Let's see what it says now. Okay, that looks good value. Now this should be uh, similar. And then the gain should be 0 0.1 something something or close close around there yep 0 0.01041 that's volt per 100 microamp turn and now we can measure uh, it will do a bunch of internal uh, comparisons of using one real turn uh, value against 108 to 108 partial turns and the partial turns are the turn that is obtained using combination of nanovolt detector with the selected uh, special uh, turn con configuration that's why it's called partial and then it measures all the errors of uh, different taps and they all should be less than 0, 0, 2 ppms. So turn 1 error, turn 2 error, turn 4 error, and so on in the binary order. So this runs around like 5 minutes maybe. And hopefully all is happy. All right, turn one error is 2.7 ppb. So we are not talking about ppms here, we are talking about ppvs. So that is 0 0.0027 ppm. And it gives you also uncertainty of the measurement or standard deviation of the measurement, plus minus 0 0.0107 ppms. But again, everything below 002 or 20 ppb is considered uh, a good result by Measurements International uh, documentation. And you may notice that I didn't wait for any warm-up. I started the test right away. So even despite we changed the parts and the bridge is open right now, there is no metal covers on top, um, it's still giving these amazing numbers. Magic of direct comp current comparator bridges. And there are actually a further evol evolution of uh, DCC bridges is for like the uh, metrology labs. Like for example, uh, here we were talking about your measurement is as good as your standard is, the one that you use as a known value resistor uh, when doing the uh, comparison. But like, how can you get uh, very good value down to PPBs 
for the standard resistors? And the answer to that is using cryogenic comparator bridge or CCC. So that's essentially the same thing, but instead of nanovoltmeter and instead of uh, magnetic flux detector, uh, like in this bridge, a uh, cryogenic comparator using uh, superconductive interference devices or squid, which is also cryocooled, uh, super sensitive uh, magnetic flux detector. So that is uh, providing at least a magnitude better uh, noise uh, and uh, stability for uh, comparisons uh, of different magnetic currents and using the special uh, constructed uh, cryoprobe and everything cooled to liquid helium temperatures those uh, bridges are able to get a single ppb uncertainty or repeatability between different measurements and uh, using the quantum hall effect uh, standard you essentially have agreement between the quantum hall effect uh, resistance to traditional like wire wound uh, ultra stable high end uh, resistance standards down with uh, single digit ppb so that's how on the top of the metrology in the national measurements institutes like ptb lne uh, nist and uh, mpl that's how they determine the value of uh, working standards like SR104, for example, for 10 kilo ohm or 1 ohm resistance standards in the oil baths, which in further they compare to all the like uh, working standards uh, and customer devices and other labs intercomparison standards using the traditional bridges like this 6010 uh, from Measurements International. So that's a little bit of uh, how it's done on the top level. And then after uh, the measurements uh, for calibration labs uh, done uh, using working standards, further they will use those to calibrate the uh, 5720, 5730 calibrators and down the chain it goes, so like calibrate the DMMs, uh, uh, power supplies, current sources, voltage sources, uh, oscilloscopes, whatever. So that's the idea. So we still are inside uh, two PPB region. So I see turn sixteen error is two point nine PPB turn 32 error is 0 0.7 ppb turn 64 error is 2.3 ppb and 128 turns 2.9 so it's at least 10 times better than its uh, limit is for the error it's pretty good And yes, uh, that is the number of uh, uh, windings or taps um, that are uh, tested. Z-score testing. What is this Z-score testing? Maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on that. When there are international intercomparisons done, usually there is a, uh, a number uh, which is which shows like each lab. For example, there are ten labs in the comparison. For example, for uh, like particular standard, be it like one ohm standard or ten volt reference, something like that. Uh, there is a. Uh, of course, all the uncertainty budget, budgets on all the measurements of each lab on the same travel standard but there is also calculation on what's the agreement between the labs and uh, there are certain limits if the agreement is uh, higher than uh, expected uh, limits then that lab either did uh, some uh, have some issues with their methods uh, of measurements or maybe they had the equipment issues or the equipment they used is, was not good enough 
so that analysis is also done but i'm not familiar with the uh, z z score what's the z score at least i don't remember out uh, of my head seeing the z score term in the uh, papers and reports You can actually uh, access most of the uh, intercomparison uh, and inter uh, international comparisons. They are the reports and results are public. You can go to BIPM uh, website. Um, there is a KCDB, which is uh, the database of uh, all the different uh, uh, measurements and all the different uh, units. So they have like the section for the voltage, for resistance meteorology, for pressure, for uh, weight, uh, all that. So you can find the relative reports uh, that uh, like uh, pilot laboratories uh, often publish those reports either on KCDB or in their own websites. So you could access and read what actually the measurement was and details about those measurements are including the analysis of agreement between different labs so i would recommend check it out bipm kcdb uh, reports so now we almost finished so we can see we did uh, 1024 uh, turns uh, but then we did 2048 turns then 4096 turns and now we're doing again 1024 turns in the opposite way um, and then we can actually try to measure this one ohm uh, standard or the other way around 0 0.1 ohm standard using the one ohm as a s reference because it's more stable and uh, i have uh, done multiple measurements on that 742a and now again, uh, 2,048 turns uh, in the reverse. I need to not to not to forget buy extra AA batteries for next year live stream <laughs> what is it reading it is reading internal turn errors between uh, different transformer taps so it's essentially part of self-calibration procedure Theory of operation, paper, or schematics? Well, there is no schematics, but you can find the theory of operation uh, on uh, Measurements International website. I would say there they have a bunch of uh, papers, and originally the design of these bridges uh, was uh, uh, made in uh, National uh, Measurement Institute in, of Canada. Uh, so further measurements international uh, was responsible to improving on that design and that ended up as a commercial successful line of bridges such as this 6010 b is actually an older model of uh, current uh, 6010 d so this is a b model there is also c model essentially like the bigger the letter is the newer it is and new bridge uh, 6010D is what they sell right now and they have like nicer uh, screen with uh, built-in uh, like analysis graphing and uh, better interface but the core under uh, underlying technology is all the same and if you google for the direct uh, current comparator bridges uh, and you can find a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, 
papers and researched uh, publications about how all this works and what their uh, performance uh, aspects are. There are older uh, bridges sometimes on available uh, on eBay for uh, like somewhat reasonable money. Like for example, Guild Line 9975 is the one that is using the same principle but using much older hardware like a galvanometer and uh, some uh, older uh, uh, parts and bits but the the concept is the same and uh, it's also capable to uh, do the comparison on resistors within uh, less than uh, ppm of the uncertainty and 6020 is uh, a bridge they uh, uh, modified and uh, particularly improved for quantum hall effect uh, comparisons so that 6020Q is the part of the 6800C or the previous older ones uh, quantum hall effect uh, systems that are essentially able to have absolute uh, unit of ohm from quantum uh, hall standard uh, to be compared uh, for normal uh, like wire wound uh, resistance standards so 6020Q is, I would say, like 90% is the same as 6010 that we have right here. But we have improvements for, to have even better performance and even better resolution. And now we are doing the partial turns. So it's comparing you know, like 4 to 128, 8 to 128, 16 to 128, 32 by 128. And the reason why they use impartial turns, so essentially to turn uh, with the nanovolt detector um, and some section of it. So because just uh, like full turns, they have 16,000 uh, turns, 16384 binary value but like if you want to have very high resolution like this bridge have you will need to have ability to go even like a smaller uh, smaller discrete steps that's why the partial turns are implemented And the bridges that are uh, tailored for thermometry, they usually have T index, for example, 6010T. So it would have some extra inputs and have uh, ability to enter like uh, alpha, beta, delta, ABC, and so on, coefficients for different thermistors and uh, um, platinum uh, temperature standards. This bridge doesn't have that, but you can do it in like today. You can do uh, that stuff in Python uh, externally on the Raspberry Pi or or in the remote uh, host that's connected to GPAB. It's only like if you want to have all contained unit uh, like one box which does it all, then you buy that particular bridge. We're almost done here. Ah, actually, we're all done. So th it's all done. We're all good. Let's do the ratio. Or we can do resistance, actually. It will just do the calculation for you. Instead of uh, giving just a raw uh, ratio, we can enter our standard, which is actually standard right now is connected uh, 0.1 ohm. So let's do that. So the value we have is that. Let's type it in. 0 
uh, six seven six four ohms so that's what I entered in here enter now we want to what's the uh, standard deviation we want for let's say we want to have zero point uh, actually I think we can keep it just a zero and then do the measurement so set we we can set ix let's do the current let's say we want to have 20 milliamps and actually that will be too much now here you you need to pay attention because what is uh, bridge is doing you you can program your current for ix which is right now is our 20 uh, ix is connected one ohm that fluke uh, standard so we don't want to have too much current for either of the resistance standards because otherwise you will just uh, have the excessive uh, temperature issues and uh, you can even damage the resistor so you need to know that ix will be uh, set by user and is will be calculated and set by bridge itself depends on what ratio you get so it's kind of a semi-automatic uh, operation you are not setting both of the currents you're only setting one current and then ratio of the bridge will determine the second current so if you said like uh, ix uh, too high or you think it's uh, good but actually it will be high to is then that will be a bad result so for now ix 20 milliamps means that in our 0 0.1 ohm we will get 200 milliamp because we have 10 times smaller resistor so settle time we can set eight seconds and then we can do the measurement and tell how many samples we want let's say we want 16 samples one six enter and now how many samples we want to use for statistics so we can use eight this will take 16 samples total but it will throw away first eight and will take only eight last samples to give you the standard deviation uncertainty and after i press enter it will start measuring so right now we have 20 milliamps through ix and ix is here is 1 ohm so we should get 0 0.99 something or 1 ohm something something uh, quick value and yep we got our 1 ohm and now we should get 0 0.1 something something or thereabout for the RS standard over there so RX and uh, RS they are like yep we got uh, pretty much that and we can see calculated current is 200 milliamps and now it will actually reverse the current the other way and start actually main measurement procedure so rx and rs they are not meaning that rs is the standard reference resistor that you need to know it's just the arbitrary value essentially so like you can have either rx as a known resistor or rs as a known resistor it's up to you and now we get the first readings because we have right now room temperature is around 25 degrees uh, the value is doesn't really match that well uh, for our one ohm one ohm supposed to be 3507 so that is one zero 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 three five oh seven but right now we get higher value uh, and i think that is because of the rs is uh, too hot because again look at how many digits we got and we got eight nine nine and a half digits But what is important is that we only see change in the third, third digits from the end. So 
it looks uh, quite stable and also 200 milliamps that's a lot of current for RS resistor so we will not be running for this for very long and we will change to different resistors for the next experiments and the value of those resistors I know closer and we should not have much of the thermal issues as with 1 ohm and 0 0.1 ohm All right, so we got our first result. It's looking pretty good, good stability. And now we can do more practical measurement with two different resistors. So, what I would like to measure now is we have this guy and we have this guy. So, if I get the exposure right, so here is more practical example. For example, this is just VHP resistor inside of the box. It's a metal box, nothing super special about it. So this is the measurements I did before. This is in January 2022. This is in December 2021. And this is one kilo ohm VHP resistor inside of the box with a four wire posts. And here is our standard. So this is also one kilo ohm resistor. It's guild line G uh 9330 1k resistor so this is the january 11 measurement uncertainty 0 0.18 ppm so we can use this standard to calibrate this resistor so what we'll do is to connect the terminals and set up to the bridge again and do the measurement so I'm just disconnecting 0 0.1 ohm so this is our and because these two resistors are same uh, nominally value so this is 1k this is 1k we will have just ratio of 1 so it's not the best way for one kilo ohm because for example ratio of 10 like 10 ohm to 1k or 100 ohm to 1k I'm sorry or 10 kilo ohm to 1k would often give better results I'll leave the question to why to the user but let's connect this resistor So we have the sense terminals, so four wire connections in the current terminals. And this is a 
Teflon insulated wire. So it have very high resistance uh, insulation, but for these uh, values it's not super important. But when you're going down to those all those digits, even like a uh, few gigaohms of insulation uh, may affect your results. So you would want to have good insulation wires in here. So that is done. Let's do the another one. So we have the chassis. If I remember the connections, all right. Should be this way, I think. Okay, so we got the two of the resistors connected. Let me get them out of the way. And what we can do is, now we can quit, because we're done with this measurement, and set the resistance ratio. And our RS is 1, 0, 0, 0 ohms, 0, 3, 4, 7, 0. Enter. Now we want to have the set the uncertainty for PVMs, we'll leave at zero, because it's just a calculation. And we want to do, first we want to set the current, so let's go back. So the current, 20 milliamps for these resistors is way too high, so we will do just uh, 1 milliamp for Hundred uh, for one kilo ohm, and because of both of the resistors are same value, they will be both having the same current. Actually, current will be slightly different, depends on the value of the resistor, of course. But I mean, the nominal current will be the same idea. And settle time will set twelve. Enter. And of course, I'm not showing anything on camera. Now because I forgot to change the camera. Sorry about that. So I can do everything from the beginning or I can just continue. I think like the, the numbers are different but the setting up is exactly the same as one ohm. So we set the reversal, we set the current, we set the number of samples, 16. And how many use for stats? Eight. And now start the measurement. So we should have both of them 100 ohms. Uh, uh, 1000 ohms, not 100 ohms. So values look correct, currents look correct. Now we do reversal and then it will start the measurement cycle. I don't usually like uh, type uh, or control the bridge from the keypad. I always use GPAB Python script with the Raspberry Pi. So this way I can have automated measurements and run the measurements for hours and hours and days and days. So this bridge was working for over seven months um, and uh, it just failed because of that uh, accident, whatever happened. Uh, like three days ago, so 
and there we get our first value first value usually always not very good it's like within a few ppms but it's not that super super great usually i start reading from like uh, use actually good values starting from the fifth sample So there you have it. I think that's pretty much it. And what I'll rest uh, will do is just to put the covers back in and put the bridge where it belongs next to air chambers. So I have two separate uh, thermal chambers. You can read about them in uh, XDEV's uh, article uh, where I built a large uh, Peltier uh, controlled uh, uh, temperature chambers that I particularly often use for all these resistance calibrations because you need to have resistors at very stable, very good temperatures. Otherwise, like even small, like 0 0.1 ppm uh, temperature coefficient will cause you, like if you are two degrees off with your ambient temperature, um, then your value will be 0 0.2 ppms off. So you cannot have big temperature changes when you chasing down anything over seventh digit and here we're talking about nine and a half digits so right now this value is reading very close not exactly close but very close to the standard value so you can see it's almost there Let's see, let's see like what's there. I might actually run the calibration uh, adjustment for the bridge using the uh, outlined uh, procedure in documentation. And uh, also I'll put the standards in the chambers so I can do, make sure the bridge is still giving uh, good values. Um, but that will not be very exciting for live stream and I think I'll do it offline so right now we are reading 999-9638 let's call it 9638 see like I moved the resistor and it's already changed quite a bit so let's call it 070 Divide by nine and nine, nine six four five four. So that's okay. That's quite a bit. Now uh, that's maybe I entered the wrong value. Let's see. We have Rx and Rs. and the standard deviation of that is zero zero eight. the ratio instead of the value so just 1000 ohms current let's do 1k to 1k yeah one and one milliamp is fine settle time 12 measure enter enter let's see the ratio But again, like I have much warmer uh, ambient temperature than these resistors were sitting at. And right now bridge uh, is taking about 24 watts. Current 0 0.3 amps, 110 volts. So power factor is 0 0.74. I'm happy that I was able to quickly repair the bridge uh, back into working order so all the resistance measurements can continue and for those uh, people who will be participating in XDEV Skull Fest 2022 uh, we will get to use it in person so that's it for this video thank you for everyone 
join in. And I think we can call it a day. So that's the ratio, ratio on the screen. You can see between those two resistors. the second camera view just showing everything around all right good repair and if you want to see more of the stuff like that be sure to check xdevs.com, we often post uh, online stuff there, so thanks everyone, bye now.